welcome to another exciting, a great wrestling production of ENG Productions Caribbean Championship Wrestling presenting the superstars of the World Wrestling Console. My name is Hugo Sabinovich, and we got a tweet for you. This is called The Bad, The Bad Boys of Professional Wrestling, and you're in for a great, almost two hours of the greatest uh, professional wrestling action, and we guarantee, like always, the best action in professional wrestling going to be in for some great matches, some fantastic matches right here, including Ivan Kala. Hey, just, just oh, my goodness. Mr. Benavich, I know you're the greatest TV announcer in the world of professional wrestling, but I am your co-host, and there's no way that you should start. Well, EJ start... never told me this. Well, I can't help that. It's not my, it's not my gig, but we're going to do a bad boys tape here. The first thing we're going to do is make this an official bad boys production right here. So we get the pirate's flag up to the left. We get the pirate's flag up to the right. And it's not going to be Caribbean Championship Wrestling Bad Boys tape. This is going to cost me my job. I could tell you that much. I don't know about this, but there's, there she blows right there. Now, back to the business at hand. Everybody knows that I'm the Hustle Rip Rogers, number one box office attraction in all the world professional wrestling, along with the very popular, the number one commentator. That's right, the official Bad Boys emblem. And I'm here to represent the Bad Boys, including none other than my very good friend Ivan Koloff. The sadistic man from Iran, Tiger Jeet Singh. Muta, the super black ninja. The greatest wrestler in the world today, my buddy, Steve Strong, against the living legend from Sudan, Abdullah the Butcher, plus Chicky Star in the cage, taking on his arch nemesis, Ron Star. And in the main event, the Great War. That's right, the Great War, which is Chicky's army versus the Justice Army. And to top off the icing on the cake, baby, there's going to be none other than me. That's right. Hustle Rip Rogers. The man of the Ripperplex. That's right. You're going to see me live and in living color because you bought or rented or stole this video. What do you mean That's stole? There's serious people out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 29 inches, baby. Girls 6 to 60, blind, crippled, or crazy. Let's get on with the video. EAG Productions are not responsible for this, man. Let's take you some good action right now. Fanáticos, este encuentro está pactado a una caída de 10 minutos de duración. Pesando 235 libras de Chicago, Randy Macho Man Savage. Taking on Hurricane Castillo. And perhaps uh, Ripper, uh, Rip Rogers, this was the match where Randy Macho Man Savage became the true gladiator that he is today. Here we see the way he used to encounter opponents all over the world. Hurricane Castillo, famous Cuban wrestler, rocket in his own rights, victim of a quick attack by the Macho Man. Yes, the Macho Man, there is that patented elbow drop, boom! And you can tell that he's hurt Hurricane Castillo, but I'll tell you one thing, Hugo, he would never do that to me. Okay, now very important to specify here, that this uh, elbow from the top rope was the one that retired Hurricane Castillo, a senior, and almost cost him to die out of the consequences of this tremendous blow. But he wasn't satisfied with that. He wanted to still hurt him some more. It was a very ag aggressive uh, attitude by Roddy Macho Man Savage, Red for Ricky Vargas. He was worried because at this point, Castillo was not even uh, opening his eyes. Well, that's the price you pay. When you get in the ring with any professional wrestler, it could be the last moment of your life. It's not anybody's fault of what happens in that ring. If you can't take the heat, you get out of the kitchen. When you get in one, if you get in that ring with one of the bad boys of professional wrestling, and the list goes on and on of those bad boys, you oh, can be in for a again. serious beating. What a way to open up this tape. Bad boys of wrestling, Randy Macho Man Savage injuring, almost causing the life of Hurricane Castillo. And if many of the fans that watch him today think that it was the WWF wrestling that made him famous, he was way famous before that. He was just a true asset in the world of professional wrestling, and he was always strong, a great athlete. But one thing we have to comment about this man is he knew he was hurting Castillo, and he did not stop. Even with the doctor in the ring, you could still see his attitude. He wanted to hurt him some more. He wanted to hurt Castillo. He wanted to hurt the referee. He wanted to hurt the fans. I think he even wanted to hurt Dr. Gonzalez because that man's not all there. He's a little bit crazy. He challenged a fan. That's his deal. That's his gig. The macho man Savage here at this given point in his career telling the rest of the world that he was out to get him. Did not care who was in the ring. He just wanted to hurt him bad. Dr. Hector Gonzalez was uh, concerned about Castillo. 
And the results on this was uh, Castillo was put in the hospital for over two weeks and almost cost him uh, the life. And obviously, he was never able to return uh, active into professional wrestling. And that was the famous, uh, her, uh, the famous uh, match where Savage became the destructor that he is. Okay, watch the way the wrestlers were carrying him out. Watch the fans concerned, the referee also. Uh, Dr. Gonzalez was looking for an ambulance. And look at the way Randy Macho Man Savage was uh, taking care of these other guys that came in to help Castillo. No concern whatsoever for Hurricane Castillo. He was just out to get him. Look out, watch this. Talking about some mean instincts on the Macho Man. This was it. On top of the stretcher, he hurt him even more. That's when uh, uh, Carlos Colon came in. And believe me, everybody was scared. People were crying at the arena. Almost cost the life of Hurricane Castillo Sr. Bad, bad boys of wrestling. Your comments on this, uh, Rip Roger. You're laughing about this, aren't you? Well, I think it's a pretty good thing because Hurricane Castillo, you should have got rid of him a long time ago. And let me tell you, if Carlitos Colon ever ran in my match like he did in Savage's match, I'd do... I'd do the same thing to him that Savage did to Castillo. Everybody was concerned. Carlos Colon coming into the rescue of Hurricane Castillo. Desperate moments for the friends of Hurricane. Savage has done the damage. Look at the fans standing around. And look at Savage. He's there for more. Oh, my goodness. Now going after Carlos. So for you fans that did not know Randy Macho Man Savage before he hit the WWF, he was already a superstar and a mean one at that before he ever came into that. I just love it. Look at he beating up Cologne. That's a sight for sore eyes because Carlitos Cologne, he's been a thorn in many man's sides and it's about time he got what was coming to him because he's always interfering well, in he's, matches. He's fighting back here. He's fighting back. Carlos Colon, he is uh, upset about what he's done to his friend. Now a brawl inside the ring. Training punches, uh, best uh, exchange here by the matcher man. But Carlos also letting him have a couple of good punches here. Meanwhile, the fans are concerned about everything that has happened here. And what a way to start this bad, bad uh, wrestlers uh, tape. The bad boys of professional wrestling. Savage ranking high among them. Oh, and you're talking about bad boys of professional wrestling. You're talking about Ivan Koloff. You're talking about myself. You're talking about Tiger Jeet Singh. You're talking about Abdul the Butcher. And the list goes on and on. And what a way to start this first match on this tape from EG Productions of Bad Boys, baby. It's Savage. It's Rogers. It's Abdul the Butcher. And the list goes on okay, and on. Okay, fans, let's take you immediately to another. Another sensational match. Okay, we're gonna stay here as uh, our director tells us uh, to stay here. Randy Macho Man Savage doing some more damage here on Carlos Colon. Referee trying to stop Savage, but obviously Rogers, after he sent a man to the hospital, I don't think that he was there to respect the, not the referees, not any wrestlers here. He don't care. All he cares about, he's throwing on a motion. He's going on a motion. That adrenaline's flowing. He don't care what's happening. Cologne doesn't care. They're two men after each other, baby. They're two men. They don't ask in no quarter and give a none. And this is a riot, a full-scale riot. You see the fans going crazy. You see Savage going crazy. You see Cologne Boy, going that. crazy. And I'm going crazy sitting here watching the action. Look at that, Savage and Carlos all over the floor here. These are the superstars of Caribbean Championship Wrestling, where legends are made and they have to prove themselves in every match. Now the wrestlers trying to break him apart. Tremendous battle after he had injured Castillo, he attacked Carlos, but look out. Now it's working to the advantage of Colon. As he was tied up, Savage, Carlos got loose and connected some shots. But that's happening the same way to Carlos. Wow. You're talking about some tough individuals and tough guys. I don't think you want to deal with Colon, Rip Rogers. I don't know about, but there's Domingo, Domingo, whatever. Oh, he's, he's my favorite, Domingo Robles. Domingo Robles. He's, hey, I wouldn't want to deal with Domingo. He's one of the baddest men in all professional wrestling today. He has kicked some butt. I'm telling you the truth. He has kicked some butt. 
Okay, fans, look at the action. The ring was not enough. They're going everywhere here. This is the action of Caribbean Championship Wrestling. The doctor going inside to the dressing room to get an ambulance for Castillo. Meanwhile, the anger of Carlos Colon and the ambitious attack by Savage has created all this mess here as nobody has been able to stop it. Even Commissioner at that time, Thomas Renesto, was trying to let the, to, to keep this guys away from each other, and now we have other people punching each other. Well, that's the typical Puerto Ricans right there. You get them fighting over the rice and beans, and they going crazy. Oh, wait a minute, now, now you're doing some insults on some uh, on some people. We're talking about wrestling, Rogers. Let's concentrate on the action here as we see them uh, taken away. Let's take you fast to another hot action match of the bad, bad boys of wrestling. Okay, wrestling fans, here we go. Next bout, bad, bad boys of wrestling, Tiger Jit Singh from India, taking on the mighty Igor from Poland. Your comments, Rip Rogers. Look at Igor kissing that fat, ugly woman out there. And there's Miguelito Perez's dad out there. He's trying to kiss the Igor, so you know what kind of guy he is. Hey, I'm here to see my main man, Tiger Jit Singh into action, babe, because he's one of the meanest, one of the most fantastic wrestlers I've ever seen. And look at that, Igor. He's he's kissing. That's affection. That's the affection of a wrestler to his fans. Yeah, he's kissed every wow. fat one. Well, all right. That's what I like. That's what I want to see. That's why the people bought this video. That's why the people went in this video. That's why the people stole this video. They want to see Tiger Jeet Singh in action. They want to see the wild man. They want to see the crazy man. They're not here to see Mighty Igor kiss these fat, ugly women. They're here to see the Tiger Man. They're here to see Tiger Jeet Singh. Oh, there goes Tiger Jeet Singh all over. Igor, referee Ricky Vargas is attempting to push this uh, man away from the powerful, mighty Igor. And we're talking about guys that are rough in professional wrestling. This man has left a lot of scars in a lot of bodies in professional wrestling, not to mention the faces of a lot of wrestlers. Look at Igor. Face, look at that face right there. You've got the blood flowing down his head because he's messing with the Tiger Man. And my friend Tiger Jeet Singh, he's going to make an example that anytime you kiss a fat, ugly woman, that's what's going to end up when you, when you mess with him. Well, here is a manager of Igor, Jose Miguel Perez, trying to guide his wrestler into their ring. And it's becoming already a bloody mess on the face of Igor, who was hit hard violently by that uh, cane that Tiger Jit Singh brings into the ring as part of his, she said, national uh, outfit or whatever. But I think it's just a way to disguise his savage behavior and likes to use that to hurt his opponents. Wow! I love it the way he hits that eagle because that eagle, he's needed a butt kicking for some time. And look at his chair, baby! Whoa! I Whoa. love it! I love it, Hugo! I love the way my man Tiger G C. ENG Productions was not mistaken to mention that this was the bad, bad boys of wrestling tape, and you're looking at one of them, Tiger Jeet Singh, and we could mention another of his uh, men like that, the Abdullah the Butcher. This uh, people have uh, caused a lot of injuries in professional wrestling, especially in the countries where they have wrestled Japan, Canada, Africa. They have uh, created some uh, legendary reputations in those countries. Well, Tiger Jeet Singh, he's known in Japan, he's known in Germany, he's known in South Africa, he's known in Japan, he's known the world over, baby. And on today's ENG Productions Promotions Presents, that's right, the Bad Boys Tapes. And when you bought this video, you get to see the Tiger Man before about 50,000 crazy, crazy people out there. I'm starting to think that ENG Productions likes the bad guys. Something tells me that he might be a little bit kinky. I don't know. Let's leave it at that on the comments, but here we go. Now it's Mighty Eager making his way of payback on Tiger Jit Singh all over the head and forehead. I'm jitsing, and I think there's some blood already on the head of the Tiger Man. Now he's feeling the same punishment he gave out on the strong man from Poland, Igor. And he is now on the mat. 
Now, what do you have to say about this, Rip Rogers? I'm just saying that Tiger Jeet Singh is one of the meanest men in the world professional wrestling, and Igor better not turn his back, and that's just what happens when you turn your back. When you turn your back on one of the bad boys professional wrestling, including Tiger Jeet Singh, you're in for nothing good, baby. Okay, Igor, it's all over. Yit Singh with that stick. And the vicious Indian wrestler backs away as the strong man from Poland hits him all over. Referee's Ricky Vargas, and this has been a wild brawl from the beginning. Now things have changed, and it's Igor who goes crazy, pushing the referee away. Wow. Now it's Igor has gone crazy. And he is uh, using that wood to open up some cuts on the head of the man from India, Jit Singh, who is not used to seeing himself in this predicament. But well, usually you see Tiger Jeet Singh on top. What's he doing right now? That's right, the referee's pulled oh, the ball away. He's got something. He's sticking something out of his boot. Look out, yes. I believe that the referee has disqualified this bout. As now Jit Singh, it's all over. The man from Poland looks like a fork to me, Rogers. Like I say, Jit Singh in a lot of ways familiar to Abdullah the Butcher. And he's got a fork now that he's using all over. The man from Poland who's got a bear hug has his only defense to protect himself from Tiger Jit Singh. When you're talking about the bad boys, Professor Wrestling, you're talking about legends like Abdul the Butcher. You're talking about crazy men like Tiger Jeet Singh. And you're talking about the bad boys, Professor Wrestling. Oh, look out. Did you see that shot with that fork on the side of the neck? That's right, Hugo, I did, and I love every minute of it. Because when this you guy, rent, this when you buy, manic. when you steal this bad boy's tape, Ooh. that's what you, if you want to see blood. What do you mean steal? What if you, you want to see blood, if you want to see gore, that's why you're here, baby. You want to see the bad boy. They're not here to see Hurricane Castillo. We're not here to see the mighty eagle. We're here to see the stars shine. And the stars shining today in ENG production in the bad boys tape is none other than Tiger G. Singh. Well, there might be a lot of people rooting for mighty eagle. You never know. You know, it's, you know, it's a democratic way of looking at a sport, too. You know? Nobody has to be just on one side, you know. Some people like the other guys, too. Well, I'm I'm for I'm for Abdel, I'm for Abdul the Butcher because he's my friend. I'm for the other bad boy Tiger Tiger Jeet Singh. I'm for Domingo Robles, and I'm I'm sure all the people in before this sellout crowd in Hiram Bithor, they're all for Tiger Jeet Singh too. Okay, the match has been officially over, but nothing has been able to control these two men. They broke all the rules right from the beginning. Referee has not been able to control the action of this match, and now he's just trying to break this man. A part here, Ricky Burgess, having no luck, and even a manager trying to control here. And this has, to me, it, it, it was never an official bout from the beginning. Okay, some more uh, pressure on the bear hug of Igor on Tiger Jit Singh. He has stopped the vicious Indian wrestler from attacking him, using all that power to keep him without being able to escape, and also using part of the, his head crushing on the chest area. Well, there's no doubt that Mighty Igor is one of the strongest men in all the world professional wrestling today, but when you're talking about the bad boys of professional wrestling, pain means nothing. The, the pain in the ribs, the pain in the lower well, back. what happened to your bad boy? He's in trouble right now. Hey, don't get on me, because Tiger Jeet said... Okay, he's biting him now. He's biting, using those... Uh, uh, his famous uh, teeth, the tiger claws, all over the head of Igor. Well, if you want to see a bad boy, if you want to see a bad boy, you're talking about biting, you're talking about kicking, you're talking about scratching, you're talking about using every weapon in your arsenal. Including the headbutt, by Including the headbutt. Igor's a bad man, he's a tough man, but this Whatever is Whatever happened man. to the bad boy? He's not getting his way. Now a real low blow right in the groin area by Tiger Jeet Singh, desperate as Igor was getting the best of the exchange with powerful headbutts. Now he's got like a rope or something around the throat of Igor, breaking all the rules. Well, he's got a complete hardware. It sort of reminds me of somebody else I know, a complete hardware in that wrestling ring.
Okay, let's not get personal here, Mr. Rogers. Okay, here we go. Referee trying to control manager Miguel Perez. He's complaining about that rope on the throat of his wrestler. The referee is not paying any attention to what Jit Singh is doing to Igor. Meanwhile, Miguel Perez is upset. The referee's just doing his job. He should, he's the manager. He's not supposed to be in that ring. It's not well, Tiger. he's upset about it. Well, I can't help it if he's upset. It's not Tiger Jeet Singh. Okay, wait a minute. Here comes that, that's what he gets. That's what he deserves. That's justice. That's the truth. Okay, finally, referee finally puts an end to this match, if you could call it that. To me, it was never an official encounter, but... Now, besides what we have seen, the blood on this match, now we're dealing with Tiger Jeet Singh all over the manager of the strong man from Poland. And I think he has hurt Miguel Perez. Well, that's what he gets. He deserves that for sticking his nose in my man Tiger Jeet Singh's business. It's none of the business of Miguel Perez. That's what he gets for sticking his nose in there. And as far as Tiger Jeet Singh, it takes a real bad boy to take on two men. He's beat up the mighty Igor. He's beat up. Okay, wait a minute. The manager gives him the stick back. And this could be revenge here as the fans go crazy here. At uh, this stadium, and Jit Singh does what you, the bad boys, do best. Run away. Let's take you to another exciting match in the bad, bad boys of wrestling. Okay, the action continues here in the bad, bad boys of wrestling. We have a true legend here from Russia. He's called the Russian Bear, Ivan Koloff, against Ricky Santana. Your comments, Rip Rogers. You know, the Russian Bear, Ivan Koloff, he's been in the world of professional wrestling for a long time. He's been a champion for a long time. And, and there's pe people like Ricky Santana dodging the Russian Bear, Ivan Koloff, because he's about 285 pounds of solid muscle. He's done things in his career, such as being the former World Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion, retiring to loot the legendary Bruno San Martino. And today on the Bad Boys tape, he's going to make mincemeat of Ricky Santana. I can feel it. Yeah, the year on that big battle between San Martino and Koloff, when he took the title, was 1969. And now we have the young Santana fighting back on call of manager here in Puerto Rico for the Russian Bear, is El Profe, getting back to the wrestling career of this outstanding uh, wrestler. Not only has he been great in this profession, but also he has uh, brought in into this world of professional wrestling a couple of big names that have made a lot of money, a lot of prestige in professional wrestling. One of them to mention, Nikita Koloff. Yo, Nikita Koloff. His nephew is a champion just like Uncle Ivan. But let me tell you, let me tell Wait, everybody. Did I, did I hear you say uncle? Uncle Ivan? Well, it's Nikita's uncle, oh. Ivan Koloff. That's why I refer to him as Uncle Ivan. I, I sense a little bit of uh, familiarity there. A little bit of close friendship there, Mr. Rogers. Well. Let's keep it impartial here. Well, I mean, I have to be. Uh, we mean keep it impartial. I have to be for Ivan Koloff. Number one, he's a bad boy. Number two, he's a close friend of mine. Number three, he's one of the greatest wrestlers ever in professional wrestling. Number four, he's big, he's strong, he's good looking. And number five, I hate Ricky Santana. Okay, you have a couple of things against uh, Santana then. But you have to give credit to Santana, just having the courage to go into the ring here at the Roberto Clemente Coliseum in Hattoray, Puerto Rico, to battle with his great uh, legend. It's uh, enough credit in my book. He's got to be stupid to get in there at the Russian Bear because the Russian Bear is a human wrecking machine. And look at that clothesline right there. Beautiful. And I love it. Beautiful move by Koloff on Santana. And look out. El Prof, the manager, pretty much close to where Santana is. And this could spell trouble for Santana. Here he comes. Santana came uh, into the World Wrestling Council and recently has seen action back in the National Wrestling Alliance and perhaps this was a match that really did some changing of minds in the career of Santana because Koloff came in full of fire and he wanted to prove that he was in the World Wrestling Council to go with the top wrestlers and unfortunately for Santana he was on his way. Look at this move, sunset flip. But look at the balance on Koloff and the referee helped uh, Santana there. Well, you called it right. The referee had to help 
Ricky Santana, but still the Russian Bear is in complete control of this match. And why is that? It's because he's big, he's strong, he's talented, he has experience, he has, he's Russian, he has El Profi in his corner, and he's my friend, my compadre, my personal friend, Mr. Well, Ivan I guess Kolov. that would explain a lot of the good things you have said about Mr. Kolov, but uh, we have to be honest about this Russian wrestler, he has been in the United States for many years and he has been a top name, not only in the National Wrestling Alliance, also in the American Wrestling Association and in Japan, he's a big name, he's big all over Canada and Europe, so he has proven his credentials throughout the years and just to look at his physique after the years, he still looks better than a lot of young kids coming up in this uh, great and dangerous profession. Well, everybody that knows anything about professional wrestling knows that Ivan Koloff has been a champion in the NWA, the WWF, the AWA, Japan, Germany, Canada. He's been a star everywhere, but now he's here in the Caribbean. He wants to make the ultimate. He wants to make his dream come true. He wants to be a champion in Puerto Rico in the Caribbean area, and he's going to make a... He's going to make his mark on Ricky Santana and prove to everybody that he is the champion that I'm saying he is. Yes, at the time he was, uh, his intentions were to challenge the invader number one for the Puerto Rico's heavyweight championship, but he had to go past Santana in order to be ranked as a number one challenger. And Santana gave him exactly that, a tough battle. Look at uh, Call of holding on for survival. Whoa, down he goes the hard way as the fans give the... Approval, oh, bad mistake by Santana there. What that is, is it's called inexperience. Yes, sir, you're the right. The Russian bear was playing possum. He saw it coming. The Russian bear's been around. He's not a rookie. He knows the ins and outs of professional wrestling. I see they make some mistakes, too. Everybody's not perfect. They make mistakes. Oh, the Russian bear is perfect. If you want a Mr. America or a Mr. Russian physique, there he is, the Russian bear. If you want a tremendous physical wrestling machine there he is the russian bear if you want somebody in hollywood to play the part of a leading a leading man there he is now the russian minute, bear he's the perfect I man you're getting carried away here let's start giving credit for his wrestling abilities but a leading man he's not such a thing he's an ugly dude let's be honest here let's talk about the max santana in trouble here call of using all his strength and his dirty tactics commanded here by el prophet here he comes and did we talk about perfection, Mr. Rogers? Well, that Ricky Santana move. Oh, wow. I, Ivan didn't know he was going to move. Well, he, uh, perhaps he should have thought of that. Here comes Santana. The Latin heartthrob all over. Call off, good punch and power by the young Santana. Call off, missing some shots. And here's Santana taking full advantage. Down goes the Russian bear. And Santana is all over. Call off, back to the turnbuckle. Good punches here. He climbs on the second rope. And he is really giving Call off some tremendous punches right to the forehead. And so that here he comes. Close line to the turnbuckle. Down goes Call off. Well, I'm telling you this, Santana's rallying. He's making his big. This is his chance for glory, but he better do it now. But you never want to estimate the Russian bear because Ivan Koloff is one of the greatest wrestlers in the world today, and I'm saying he's the best. Okay, Santana signals for his famous flying body splash as he comes up from the top rope to land on Koloff, and he moved out of the way. Second mistake, and I think this one was a deadly one. Second rope, here comes the Russian cycle, and he got Santana. He's out. No way he's gonna survive this. A count of three, there is your winner. One of the legends in professional wrestling. A bad, bad boy in professional wrestling. The Russian Ivan Kolovic, he's not satisfied. Oh, he should be. He shouldn't be satisfied because he's here to make a name for himself. He's gonna show you. He's gonna show he's everybody. already defeated Santana. He's using illegal tactics here. Well, well that, that's gonna, it's gonna deter other people to wanting to get in the ring with Uncle Ivan Koloff, my friend, the winner of this match. Well, did they pick the right guy to do this bad, bad wrestling tape? Okay, fans, let's take you to some more action right here in Caribbean Championship Wrestling. Way to go, Ivan. Okay, here we go, more action. 
is jumping Joe Zaboldi oh, against... just a minute, just a minute. No, it's Young the star, the legendary oh, oh, oh. Domingo oh, Robles oh, hour. Domingo this is what the bad boys of wrestling's all about. Better. When you're talking fan bad fan boys of wrestling, Spanish you're talking about the legendary cult figure, and that just happens to be from Fajardo, the honorary mayor of Fajardo, Puerto Rico, Domingo Robles. He's a tough man, there's Domingo Robles. Uh, Rip Rogers, what about his opponent, Sabaldi? Well, you can tell he's green. You can tell he doesn't know what's going on. You can actually see the living legend, the legendary Domingo Robles. He's actually toying with this young Sabaldi. What about, what about the famous uh, Sabaldi wrestling tradition? What's that? Well, he's uh, on his father, uh, his family, always uh, involved in this great sport. Oh, I know his daddy used to sell programs in uh, New York City. His mother was the short order cook at, oh my at the goodness. garden, and his uh, his other brother oh. used to sweep the ring. So, Wait a minute. I think I think uh, some I think some of his uncle. I think he used to own a minor league baseball. No, it was a minor league wrestling promotion on the East Coast. I think. I think that's what it was. Okay, and, uh, I'll give you credit Robert, for the last uh, part of the information. Uh, they are associated with a small wrestling office there, but here, here we're talking about Robles now. going all over. The legendary Domingo Robles poking the eyes. I love it. He patented that move. It was wow. finger out left, finger out right, and right in the eyes. There they oh, go. Some good punches on Domingo on Sabaldi. Whoa, look at that right there. That's why he's a living legend. Right in the throat, and, the, and he went on to win. Let's cut it right here because Domingo beat him up so bad. So okay, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. Rogers. It just happens that I, I, I don't believe you. Why do you stop the match here? Because I, I know what happens in the match. You know what happens in the match. The legendary Domingo Robles beat him up so bad, the match had to be stopped, and they carried Savoli off on a stretch. Well, I'm going to find out about this. Meanwhile, let's take a look at another exciting match here in the bad, bad boys of wrestling. We're going to take it out to a street fight, featuring the match for the television championship of the World Wrestling Council. Everything goes. They better want the champion against the great Muta, known as a super black ninja. Your comments, Mr. Rogers. Yes, when you're talking about the bad boys of wrestling, rest, you're talking about Muta. That's right, Muta, the super black ninja. And I love the way he's going to knock some sense into that stupid, ugly invader. It's about time. And look at the move. He's climbing the top. That's why it's a super bad boy, and kaboom! I love the way he knocks that. <laughs> okay, you have noticed street clothes here. There's no disqualification. Last man standing wins. This is a title match. One of the roughest matches in professional wrestling, featuring a true superstar from the Orient. And what can we say about Super Black Ninja? I guess he took it right where another famous Japanese wrestler left it. The famous Tiger Mask with his spectacular style. Then came this Muta. And believe me, I don't think there's another one better in his style. I don't know about that, but what I do know is that my friend, the Super Black Ninja, Muta, he's got his daddy shirt on because he spends a lot of time there. And I saw the invader. Wait, is that, is that a little plug here or what? I know I've seen Invader, and that is, that are his street, that's his street clothes right there. He walks down the street, he has that stupid looking mask on. He's got a $2 penny, penny sweatshirt on. He's got that stupid looking blue jeans on. And they, those are the official street clothes of Muta. And I might throw another plug in for Danny's. Yes, he hangs out at Danny's because that's where all the hot women do not all go to. And that's where you do pick them up. Brother, if you go there, I don't know about what kind of woman you're talking about. They won't catch me dead in that place. I hang out at the lizard for myself. Okay, okay, let's stop the private life here, Mr. Rogers. Let's go back into his comments on this street fight here. Don't get me in trouble, you know. I'm looking for my fourth marriage. This might cause me a lot of problems here. Wait a minute. Let's talk about Invader here going outside the ring. And Muta proving to the wrestling world that he's here to be the number one. Wow! Wait a minute. That's my line. Okay, what are you I'm doing sorry. here? I mean, I'm... I'm Look at I, the bloody mask. I Look spent years blood. doing that. You're just taking over, Rogers. You're a bad guy. And here comes uh, Muta all over. The bloody mess of the invader. Everything goes here. No disqualification. Look at the mask. All that blood and the young Japanese grappler all over. Oh, we saw Eddie Grimes there. That's that, Fast Eddie. That's, that's Fast, fast Eddie. Eddie. He's the number two photographer in all the world professional wrestling. Oh, who's number one? Uh, you know, and I know, but let's okay. not tell anybody. All right. Let's keep it there. Okay, here we go. More action. When we talk about the superstars of Caribbean Championship Wrestling, you're not going to find this action nowhere else. Not in the WWF, NWA, or whatever you want to name it. 
this is where the hot action takes place. Could it be part of the climate, Rogers? I don't know if it's part of the climate, but I think it definitely has to do with the rice and the beans. It definitely has some. Hey, look, there's Vincent. There's Vincent, and there's the Danny shirt again. There's Vincent, the, the guard. He's keeping all the crazy Puerto Ricans out of the action. And there's El Profi, my friend, right there. Okay, the match continues, and it's all beat for the Super Black Ninja. And talking about him, what a great uh, tour he's having in the United States at this present moment. We're really happy of what uh, this man is doing because uh, we admire this great wrestler. He's a, a great wrestler. Don't try to pull over, don't pull the wool over my eyes. I know you don't like him. I'm the man that likes not, Muta. I'm he's my friend. Abdul the, Abdul the Butcher's my it. friend. Tiger Jeet Singh's my friend. I'm my friend. Muta's my friend. Ivan Koloff's my friend. They're the bad boys of professional wrestling. That's why you people bought this tape. That's Please. why you people rented this tape. And for most of you Caribbeaners, that's why you stole this tape. You, hey, why did who stole this tape? He oh, kicked him minute. in the lower extremities, and I and I don't mean Sartorius Priscillus. Uh, wait a minute, uh, Rogers, you're, you're really getting uh, out of track here. You, you're saying people steal this tape? I mean, people people buy tapes and rent tapes. They don't they don't steal tapes. Meanwhile, the invader he used an illegal kick. But uh, we did say that in Street Fight, Mr. Rogers, everything goes. This is the ultimate challenge. No holds bar. Last man standing wins. And if you're tough enough, this is where you belong. If not, it's time to take the luggage and quit. Well, he Whoa. hit him with a chair. Wow. That's a bonsai to me. That's a bonsai right there. Oh, it's Hey Dottie, it's Hey Maggie. Okay, here we go. The action continues as the invader now, proving why he was one at one time one of the bad guys in professional wrestling before he turned scientific. Oh, oh you call that scientific? Now, wait a minute. He's I, I hit said my he, friend I said he's, he's showing the style he had before. He hit him in the head with a chair. He threw him in the table and hit him in the back Ooh. with that chair. He kicked him in the lower extremely above his groin area. Ooh. He tied him up in the ropes, hit him with the chair, threw him over the top rope, hit him with everybody everything but the kitchen sink. I think he's going for it now. And you're he ripped oh, his shirt. That's, that's the famous off. shirt, the famous T-shirt. He ripped off by Danny. OK, shirt. I guess that Danny's is in trouble now. Ropeless gave him. Jesus, even Rogers is having a heart attack here. Calm down, Rogers. Please, hold your horses. Let's go back into this match. Calm down, Rip. OK, here we go. We have our co-host excited here, pulling his hairs here. But let's let's talk about this match, the bloody mess on the face, as you can see on the mask of the invader. And let's repeat the rules here. Last man standing wins, and everything goes. And let's talk about the referee here, Bikingo. I think he's been out of place right from the beginning of the match. Oh, everybody knows Bikingo. He doesn't know what's going on. His big thing is life. He, he's sort of like the Three Stooges, but he's number one. He's like Curly, he's like Mitt Larry, and he's like Mo, all wrapped up into one. He don't know what's going on. Now, the rules of the no disqualification match street fight, there are no rules, so I don't even know why it's in there to begin with. Okay, I guess the ropes, here it comes. Look at that. Close line by Muta. My friend. Well, you have a lot of friends in professional wrestling. Well, I'd like you. to meet your enemies. You know, because uh, if you associate with this kind of man, I could presume that you have a lot of uh, rivals. Okay, he took that uh, hard uh, boot off. It looks like what the man wore on constructions there. How can you say that's a hard boot? That's a J.C. Penny special. I know that. You, you think it could be like a Buddha beat? Buda Dean's boot. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Are you saying that Buddha Dean's boot is loaded now? No, I'm saying he now, bought. Wait a I'm, I'm saying he bought a J.C. Penny's just I'll like keep that. I keep that on. On record there. Okay, meanwhile, we see the invader fighting back. Muta also bleeding now. And the invader not giving up. He's fighting hard. He's got the boot off of Muta. And some hard shots have been connected here. The street fight. One of the matches that the people in the Caribbean like the most. What they like of man to man. What they like is bad boys. They like the Domingo Robleses. They like Abdul the Butchers, the Tiger Jeet Scenes, the Rip Rogers, and they like my buddy Muta. But this invader, he's gone over the edge. He's gone over the limit. This tape should be not show. I'm demanding that the director, the producer, ENG promotions and productions or whatever. I demand they stop this tape because this is the time for Muta to shine. Okay, and wait a minute. My bad boy now, wait a minute. Beat up. You already stopped one match that we're gonna get back to it because I am doing my research here. 
here. So don't think you get away with that. And you ain't stopping this match because we're going to see the conclusion of this match. And it's not over that Domingo Robles Saboli scheme of yours. I'm going to get to the bottom of that. Wow! Now, what a wow! deadly kick. What happened right there? That was the kick. You stole the my wow again. The lateral meniscus of the left knee. That was a, a shot to the groin area. What are you talking about? Hard stuff here. Both men have indulged themselves in some illegal blows, and needless to say, everything goes. Look at that bloody mask on the mask of the embedded. And you can imagine the blood could be seen through the mask. How is his face underneath that? Oh, sweaty, bloody man. Obviously ugly. But we have some, speaking of illegal blows, I was in Elizabeth the other night. But back to the ring right now. We see wait my minute, man wait, wait, wait. We're getting back into some private stuff here. Now, I don't want you to mention any nightclubs, any stuff like that. Let's just talk about this match. I don't know if you're getting paid to plug these places, but I'm going to get a hold of uh, a fast Eddie. I'm going to really be upset about your tactics here. I don't think this is good. I don't know if you want a free ticket or going to these places, but... Let's talk about this match. Where's Danny shirt at? Okay, here you go again. Now, meanwhile, the embed is suffering at the hands of the famous Japanese super black ninja, who is uh, currently known as Muta, the acrobatic, dangerous ninja who has impressed the American wrestling audience. And I do believe there's a lot of jealousy involved. Even the top stars in professional wrestling are very scared of the popularity on this Japanese wrestler. So it remains to be seen what's gonna happen in the career of this man who is uh, perhaps gonna be the man that's gonna substitute the figures of Antonino Inoki and the giant Baba. I don't know that, I don't, but right now he's a legend, up and coming legend just like Domingo Robles, but right now he's got the invader feet. Domingo Robles? Are you in a payroll with this guy? Uh, no, I'm gonna do some serious inquiring about this because I do believe you're getting some money on the side for his comments. Okay, back to the match here. We have a Super Black Ninja, a direct choke on the invader, and everything goes here. Referee is not gonna be able to separate Muta from the invader, as there's no disqualification rules in this special match sanctioned by the World Wrestling Council. Good move by the invader, as he was being choked by the cables around his throat area. What do you mean, good move? He broke the rules. He just threw my man Muta over the top rope. You now, said there was no rules here. Now, let's not contradict each other here. There's no disqualification. Everything goes. And you're entitled to do whatever you have to do to win the match. Now, wait a minute. That's not the road of fair and square play. That's not truth you justice the in the American guys, way. You said the bad guys don't follow those rules. So what are your concern here? Oh, my concern right now is the face. That's right, the bloody, ugly, stupid-looking face of that invader. And I'm predicting now that Muta, my friend, oh, my, my buddy, my compadre, is okay. going to beat him now. He's getting ready. He set him up. This went to the people of the Bad Boy Wrestling Promotion. There it is. Boom! Incredible. Incredible move. Here goes for the count. Remember, the fall zone count on this match is the last man standing that wins this street fight. Now, wait a minute. What do you mean the falls don't count? Well, what do you mean falls don't count? In the street fight rules, it's the man that gets pinned one, two, three. You've got this confused with a Texas death match. Okay. You ought to know your subject matter. That's okay, why I'm the co-host. Let me tell you this, Rogers. If there was a pinfall, the referee will count one, two, three, the bell will ring. Then he'll have about 30 seconds to recover. The bell will ring again, and if he doesn't get up after 10, then you have the winner. This is street fight as the way the people in the Caribbean see it. Well, the people in the Caribbean, uh, Caribbean Let's they must confusing. be crazy then, because I know my wrestling. I've been around. Just look at the blood on that invader. And let me tell you, let me tell you everybody in TV land, and let me t tell the people that bought, rent, or stole this video. They and that's don't the steal this tape. Okay, sleeper hold. Sleeper hold on the invader. Very dangerous hold. Applied here by the expert, Super Black Ninja, submission halt, deadly weapon applied here by the Japanese wrestler, Muta. The reaction on the part of the invader. And to you viewers out there, we apologize for some of the comments on Mr. Rogers that do not represent my uh, way of seeing things or ENG Productions.
Now, wait a minute. Just because you fat women, and there's a good legal move. Now, wait a minute. He well, threw him over the top rope. There's no disqualification, sir. Everything goes. Oh. Oh, okay. Here we go. Referee outside. Now, let's not forget that the last man who uh, is standing wins the bout. So, this is a very crucial moment on this confrontation for the TV title of the World Wrestling Council. A bloody mess. And referee Bikingo right on top of the action, Roger. Right on top of the action, he's sitting there just his pants thinking he's Dick the Bruiser or something, I think. He don't know what's going on. Look at Del Grand Vikingo. He should be taking control of this action. He's the official. He's the referee. He should be in control of this match. What's he doing? Adjusting his tights. Looking at the... He kicked him in the lower extremities again. And now he's going to whip him. And you call this justice. You call this Caribbean. I call you call this Puerto Rico. What? Street fight. Hey, in the street where you fight it, you do whatever you have to to beat your opponent. In professional wrestling with his country design, they know what they're dealing with. And this is dangerous for Super Black Ninja. He's hanging as the Super Black Ninja with that belt. No oxygen going through his body at this present moment. He's fighting for survival here. That's right, Muta, Muta, my friend. He's getting hung upside down. What can I do about it? Because there's about 20,000 screaming crazy Puerto Ricans yelling for the invader. And I'm saying my buddy doesn't have a chance because everybody's prejudiced. Prejudice? We're talking about wrestling ability. There's two men in the ring. Fans don't have nothing to do with it. Well, that was a fast count by El Grand the Okay, Kingo. let's not get hot about this. Remember, the falls don't count. It's the man, the last man standing that counts here. So let's not get uh, the referee involved in this situation. We're dealing with two top wrestlers going at it in one of the most ferocious style battles in professional wrestling, the street fight. And I do believe that Super Black Ninja has looked better than the Invader one. Oh, it's about Oh, yeah? I call it as, like it is, Rogers. I oh, I like it. Then you're on my side then. That's no, no, wait, wait. Go, no, move to go. Let's not get carried go, away. Go, move to go. Come on, Rogers. Go, move to go. Let's not start the party. 20,000 screaming, crazy carabiners going completely crazy. I can hear him. Listen. Go, move to go. Go, move. And what's he pile driving my buddy Buddha for? That could end his career. That could sever he's his looking, umbilical cord. He's looking to stop. He's, he's what? Give me a break, Rip Rogers. Come on. Are you playing with my head here? Let's stop this attitude, Mr. Rogers. We're talking about a pile driver direct attack on the neck and shoulders as he was driven into the mat by the invader, but he has recovered, showing his youth and his strength. That's right, he's one of the greatest super athletes of the world. My buddy, Muta, he's a top Japanese wrestler, and that's why he is a bad boy professional wrestler. That's why he's like Rip Rogers. That's why he's like Abdul the Butcher. That's why he's like Tiger well, if, he's, if he's like Rip Rogers, he's in trouble because we just got word from ENG Productions. We are going to be getting back into that scheme you pulled with that Robles match and Saboli. Don't think you got away with that. My I'm friend, Domingo Robles, you. what do you mean? I got the rest of the match. The hey, people. forget about that. Let's get back to the action. Oh, now you don't want to hear the rest of the story. Okay, here we see Super Black Ninja Muta. He's all over the invader. It's been a tough uh, encounter from the beginning. Now it's been uh, back and forth. The invader, I think, has recovered a little bit of the control of the match. Meanwhile, uh, Ninja does not want to uh, back up on his tracks, and I think it's going to be a hotter feud than a lot of people expect it to be. What do you mean a hotter feud? It's a boiling, it's at the boiling point now. I can see the sweat coming off Muda's face. The I blood. Can, I can see the sweat. I can see the blood rolling off underneath the invaders' underarms there. And I can see El Gran Vikingo with that disinterested look because he knows that he's going to be for the Puerto Rican, the invader, I can tell him. Whoa, both men colliding, each trying to take advantage here. And both bodies ahead went uh, just like a train wreck. Both men are down on the mat, and now Vikingo is counting. OK, Bailey gets up first. Oh, wait a minute. The manager, Professor, in trying to interfere here. He's got the manager. He connects well. Here comes the ninja. He's got the briefcase. A block by the invader. He's got the metal briefcase and knocks down the super black ninja. There's no disqualification. Here is the count. Three seconds. Wow, what a controversial match. Oh, wait a 
it. The match is not over. Yes, it's over. We heard the bell. No, you told me that after the pitfall, it's whoever gets up to their feet first. Don't try and Do you swerve think me. this man is going to get up from there? Don't try and swerve me. Don't try and change the colors on the cookie. Where's Domingo Robles when you need him? Okay, wait a minute now. Super Black Ninja never got up. Wait a minute, they, they, there was no count. You're trying to swerve me. I've been around. I'm co-host of this ENG promotion of the Bad Boys. Okay. No, you told me earlier there was supposed to be an official count. I don't see no official count, so I'm declaring this match a legal. Huh? You can't. There's a championship. Okay, fans. Oh, who's oh. that fat guy? Oh, he's a classic. He's a good friend of Eddie Grimes. This guy is nuts. This guy is Bobby Jaggers. He's always looking for trouble. Well, he's a. He's a fat pig. He's a fat pig, but he's, he's not a bad guy. He's crazy, but he's okay. Now, don't get me in trouble, Rogers. I, I, don't, I didn't want to say that about, uh, about uh, Mr. Bobby Jaggers. He's a great wrestler. Now, he's, he's challenging the invader. Wait, wait a minute. He's the guy that was in Vietnam. He's got that shrapnel on his behind end. Yes, he got shot in the rear end. He's also the well, now, wait, a wait a minute. He used to play football at Oregon State. And what he are gave you doing o to he me? He gave O.J. Simpson the Rogers. hardest tackle he ever had. He's got a Porsche in South Africa. He's got a little bandito, little little bandito running around the island of Puerto Rico. Can you I verify believe. the story? Can you verify the story? I read it in the National okay. Enquirer. Then it's true. Then Bobby Jaggers now putting the elbow to the invader. Now this is not fair because the invader went through a struggle and a battle with the Super Black Ninja. He's a bloody mess, and now the cowboy from Kansas comes in and gets some cheap shots. On the invader. Oh, it's he, not fair. Did you know he owns a, a, a million acre ranch in Dunlap, Kansas? Bobby Jaggers does. Bobby Jaggers. Does. He also parties at Shout. I know. Shake it up, baby. Now. Okay, fans. Okay, let's let's fans. Let's take a look now at that controversial match that Mr. Rogers said that it was a, a conclusion on the famous scheme of the Sabaldi match and Robles. Let's take a look at the end of this match. But where's the Danny's T-shirt at? Okay, now here's the match. This is where you said to our director, let's leave it here. Now, this is not what happened. Now, this is what happened here. Now, you could try to stop it if you want, but you're not going to lie to the people. Sabaldi was not uh, giving up. He was going through some rough times on your classical friend, Domingo Robles. But Mr. Robles, who stands, Robles, the last name, stands for Oak Tree, and Domingo is Sunday. Look, he pulled his teeth out, and he bit him with his false teeth. I don't believe it. Now, wait a minute. I missed that. That was fast. Well, tricky, you miss a lot of things because you're not sharp. You're not with it like the legendary Domingo, Domingo Robles. There it is. Oh, the right famous. to the eyes. Right to the eyes again. That's a specialty of Robles. It's a classic. He's, he's a cheater. That's what he is. He's a bad boy, professional wrestler. That's why he's on that tape. That's why I'm on. Look, look at the greenhorn, Savoldi. He I think, don't know what's going on. I think on. he paid you and, and Eddie Grice to put him on this tape. Oh, no, Savoldi's no, a classic jabroni. There's been a big this. Okay, you could knock Savoldi, but I think this is a payoff to put Domingo Robles in this tape. I'm going to get down to the bottom of this story. You guys are going to hear about this. Well, just because he's my father-in-law, that has nothing to do with it. Now, wait a minute. Father-in-law? Now, now, wait a minute. Okay, well, we'll talk about that later. I, I'm going to have to talk to Fast Eddie about this. It's getting a little bit ridiculous here. He's letting you get away with a lot of things. and already know the mystery you put uh, Rick St. James Look at the on Domingo Robles. After a lot of almost pins, pulling his teeth out, all of a sudden he's strutting. You can tell he's a master of psychology. You can tell he's a bad boy. You can tell he knows what's going on. And look at and look at the, the look at the greenhorn. Look at Savoldi kicked him with the left foot. He don't know what's going on. On. Well, as a young kid, you know, well, you have to learn to the ropes, and uh, the only way of learning is to go through this uh, to tough Oh, there it is! The classic the eye, 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 eye gouge. Dado the one record. and Dado two, right in Los Ojos. See, I know Spanish. Man, Rogers, you're crazy. I'm telling you, you're crazy. You are a serious nutcase. I'm sorry to say this. There's my man Domingo getting ready ready for the finale. Whoa! Getting ready! Whoa! There's the three count right there. Wait a minute. How can you say that with the three now? Maybe, maybe. Oh, Sabaldi wasn't Robles, too good of a wrestler, but he still de he still defeated Domingo Robles. Right How dare you, Mr. Right Savinovich? How dare you insult the legendary honorary mayor of Fajardo, Domingo Robles? Well, let's just see what happens, Hugo, when you encounter my very good friend, the legendary bad boy professional wrestling, Mr. Terry Funk.
Well, this has nothing to do with wrestling. I don't know why you're showing this. This is not fair. What do you want? I want to talk to Terry, please. Honey, there's some fat pig out here that wants to talk to you. This is embarrassing. Ay, mi madre, lo que me ha no, no, wait a minute. Now, this, <laughs> now, this is embarrassing. Now, you're using part of an interview. Oh, wait a minute. Get a load of this guy. Terry, I'm sorry to, to bother you this early. We, Don't you know it's early in the morning? I'm sorry, but I, I, we, we, the big day. Is that date, a camera? Yeah. That's a camera? Yes, we're doing this. The big date is coming in Ponce, September 19 against Barry Windon. What are you doing here? This is a special interview with you. This is Texas. This is a double cross ranch. Did you ask for permission to come here? Did you? You did not answer the phone, so I could not get in touch with you. You that want to talk about Barry Windham? Why, he's nothing but a drugstore cowboy. Nothing but an egg sucking dog. Don't you realize that I am meaner than a rattlesnake, tougher than shoe leather, and I am going to win the Universal Championship? You tell everybody in Puerto okay. Rico that. Okay. Take your boat back, your truck back, your lowrider back, you fat. Pig. Let me my wife was right. Let me translate. Bueno, yo dije aquí que vine aquí temprano para well, I, Now, Rogers, I don't think this is fair because you used an interview that I risked my life going into the Double Cross Ranch, and this this man insulted me. His wife called me a fat. Okay, I'm overweight. I could admit it, but I mean that doesn't mean like he has to call me a fat pig. And look at the way he's dressed. And look at the way he's dressed. Well, what do you expect for one of the original bad boys professional wrestling? So all of Puerto Rico is looking at me right now in my underwear. Do I care? No, because I am on my property, and I don't care what a bunch of pigs and egg-sucking dogs think. Bueno, dice que primero well, la, I don't, I don't think it's fair, Rogers, to show this interview has nothing to do with this tape, and uh, you show the man that's abusing the privileges of us being at his home. No, no, please, please, getting half por favor. Naked dice here. Que se va a de este I love it. You love it. I love it. Show them all, Terry. Boy. Show them why you're Look one of the bad boys for professional he's wrestling. He's naked behind me. Well, so what, you embarrassed Domingo Robles? Now you know how he feels. Okay, here we go, talking about bad, bad boys of wrestling. Have I noticed that you have uh, not mentioned the fact that Statistic Steve Strong is the Universal Heavyweight Champion? You have mentioned Abdullah, 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 but what about the main man? And he's taking Abdullah. Hey, don't try and stir the pot. Hey, they're two of the greatest bad boys in the world, and it's gonna be a classic confrontation! Whoa! Right from the beginning, Abdullah the Butcher all over the champion. They build this match as the wrecking of two trains where two powers meet. And that's exactly what's happening. Abdullah the Butcher, close to 500 pounds from Sudan, Africa, taking on the Universal Champion of the World Wrestling Council, Sadistic Steve Strong. And you know, coming off as a result of Chiki Star in a match, he got the Abdullah the Butcher with a cane on the throat. Then Abdullah turned against Chiki. And finally, Steve Strong hit Abdullah twice with a chair. And the lawyer of Abdullah the Butcher uh, demanded a match, and he got it, and this is the match that everybody's been waiting for. Now, don't try and stir the pot, Savinovich. I'm not going to say who's the greater basketball player, Larry Bird or Magic Johnson. I'm not going to say who's the greater hitter, Tony Gwynn or Wade Boggs. I'm Tony not going to say Wynn. who's the greatest boxer, Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard. And I'm not going to say who's Muhammad the best of the bad boys. I'm not going to say that. Let's just say, let's sit back. Let's watch. Let's enjoy the bad boys. Abdullah Butcher and Steve Strong go wild, go crazy in Hyron Bithorn Stadium now. Fans, uh, without a doubt, you're watching two of the meanest wrestlers in the whole world. One holds the Universal Heavyweight Championship. The other one is the challenger, Abdullah the Butcher. Top names in professional wrestling. And everybody's aware of the danger involved in this match. The title on the line, but yet, even with the importance of the title, I believe this is like a personal feud going down the line to prove who's the baddest of them all. That's right, this is the battle of the baddest, the battle of the biggest, and the battle of the best.
Who's it gonna be, Abdul the Butcher or Steve Strong? You've got the wildest, most sadistic man in professional wrestling in Abdul the Butcher, and you've got the strongest man in professional wrestling in the legendary Steve Strong. And I saw Victor, that's right, I saw Victor Quinones at ringside. Well, not, only, not only Victor Quinones with the long hair, but we also saw uh, the presence of one of the commissioners from the Boxing and Wrestling Commission in Puerto Rico, and more important, the doctor, Hector Gonzalez. And he knows before the night is over, there are gonna be some stitches down there. Well, there's definitely, there's no doubt about that, because when you get a man, the caliber of sadistic Steve Strong, when you get a bad boy, the caliber of Abdul the Butcher, you know there's gonna be blood. You think, you know you there's think uh, Victor Quinones needs a haircut, or what? The promoter, Victor Quinones. I don't know, he needs his pants taken up, that's for sure. Okay. Getting back into the match, Universal Championship. Abdullah the Butcher from Sudan, Africa, close to 500 pounds. He demanded this match. Steve Strong has clean house with almost everybody in the World Wrestling Council, even though he had some tough matches. He, he's been able to hold and retain the title, but we do not know what's gonna happen before this night it's over, as Abdullah the Butcher is that uncontrollable force a man that is willing to go to the limits and beyond the limits to hurt his opponent. When you have the immovable force against the immovable object, something's gonna happen. And when, when you have two trains collide, there's gonna be a collision. And there's a collision happening now in Howard Bithorn Stadium. There's about 20,000 screaming crazy. There you see the crowd right there, 20,000 crazy crazy screaming Puerto Ricans on their feet because they want to see bad boys. They want to see blood. They want to see gore and they want to see what's happening right now. Well, you, you forgot to mention the fact that when you come out to the ring, the fans usually boo you, Mr. Rip Rogers. And regardless of that fact, I'm one of the bad boys of wrestling. Abdul is one of the bad boys of wrestling. Steve Strong one of the bad boys in wrestling. And that's why you bought this tape. That's why you rented this tape. That's why you stole this tape. Wait a that's minute. why you copied on your machine this tape. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. What are you talking about? Copying, stealing? Now, you have a dirty mind. These are decent people. They will not They will not do this. They, well, I, they I will go out, out and buy tapes. I hang out at Elizabeth's. I hang out at Danny's, just like Victor Quinones. Oh, wait a minute. We're talking about Victor Quinones involved now with a nightclub in Elizabeth. Okay, we're going to have an investigation on that matter. I heard him about going out with Rosa and her tambourine. All right. We're getting the scoops here from our wrestling inquirer. And now Abdullah the Butcher proven to the world why he is that dangerous. How many times have we seen Steve Strong go down from a headbutt like that? Zero. Well, this time he has fallen down. And Abdullah the Butcher looks so impressive. Impressive indeed. And the fans are in the side, or I should say they're backing up Abdullah the Butcher. Well, that is strange. It is strange. I'm not for Abdullah. I'm going to be impartial. because Impartial? I like, that's right. I like Abdullah the Butcher. You're about an hour and 10 minutes late, Mr. Rogers. And I like Steve Strong. And I might just run out there and stop that match myself. Boy, you're a tough cookie. Let's put it this way. I don't think you or anybody could stop this match because if there is such a thing as a destiny with humans, I think these two men, once they got that match started, they had in mind that nothing or nobody was gonna be able to stop it till there was a true winner, a man that could call himself the universal champion. What about Domingo Robles? Here you go again with Robles. We're gonna try to talk to ENG Productions and get a little bit more investigation on this matter on the future tapes. Yeah, look at that. Uh, I'm gonna be impartial. I'm just reporting the action. We have two great champions, two great bad boys of professional wrestling, wrestling even Steven. I'd say the score is 27 to 27. And you're not gonna trick me into saying I'm for Abdullah or I'm for Steve. I'm just gonna report the action as it's happening and it's a great wrestling. You're just match. afraid of picking a winner because it's it could go either way. You don't want to lose face in front of the fans, and that's why you don't want to pick a winner. And I predicted Domingo Robles would win. And, and we saw did. how we saw how that came about. Okay, Steve Strong giving his best shots to Abdullah the Butcher. Look at that clothesline on the monster on the machine from Sudan. Blood coming out of his head. Sadistic has drawn first blood. 
on Abdullah the Butcher, which could also mean more danger to the champion, as it is always known that Abdullah could become twice as dangerous when he's a bloody mess. Well, that's right. You know Abdullah Ooh, Butcher is like an animal. He's like an animal in that ring. I have a scoop for you. There is a rumor that somebody very important in EG production stole the pants of Abdullah the Butcher from the dressing room. And I'm gonna try my best for the next tape to get a picture of this pants in the living room, one of the top heads of BNG Productions. And wait till Abdullah finds out about that. That's a way of getting even. You guys show that interview with Terry Funk. I'll show Abdullah the picture of the pants hanging. I know who stole it. You guys are looking for trouble, okay. You're well, gonna not, get it. It's not my fault that Terry Funk's wife called you and, and uh... A fat pig, say it. <laughs> A fat pig, I'm that's right. I was gonna say a rotund animal. A fat pig, okay, okay, one on you, one on Terry. But his wife wasn't a pretty lady either, man. Are you calling Terry Funk's wife a dog or what? Well, I seen, I seen better looking dogs in my time. Let's put it that way. Okay, wow! Hey, she insulted me first. He insulted me then after, and you guys kept it up. So what can I do? Hey, just report the accident ringside. Okay. Here we go. Sadistic Steve Strong putting all his force into that flying elbow. That smash came down the hard way on Abdullah the Butcher. He's got him down. Leg drop across the throat. Referee is Isaac Rosario. I don't think he has experience to be the referee on this important title match, but I think he was picked by the council because of being an ex-wrestler and being a tough guy, he probably could hold him more into the ring. Well, you know, it couldn't be El Gran Vikingo because he can't even count to three. And it couldn't be Ricky Vargas because that stupid white angel broke his leg. He's so uncoordinated, he tripped on the mat and broke my good friend Ricky Vargas's leg. So I'd say that uh, Isaac Rosario is a good choice by the World Wrestling Council. Okay, back into the, this Universal Heavyweight Championship match. Sadistic Steve Strong has given Abdullah the Butcher is some tremendous punishment. And Abdullah, it's a, a bloody mess, but I don't think this is gonna be enough to get rid of the big man from Sudan. We have seen him often come back from more dangerous situations. But one thing you have to admit, Rip Rogers, the fans are definitely backing up. The bad man from Sudan. I'm it's not, not a chance. I'm not gonna admit anything because I'm impartial, but who's that little goofy looking guy with the Panama hat down there at ringside. Who is that? Hey, hey, let's keep it quiet. That's that's Fast Eddie. You don't want to get in problems with this guy. Oh, look at that move by Steve Strong. Came flying through with a type of a football tackle. And he... That's Randy Bacotti. That's, that's, that's a... That's a lawyer from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, I know it. I'm not stupid. I've been around. I can watch TV. I can see interviews. I know it's Randy Bacotti, Abdullah the Butcher's manager and legal representative. He's charging him I a lot of that. money. This man gets a lot of money, but I think he deserves it. He got the Abdullah the match right away. And here's Abdullah trying to make... Hey! Wait a minute. He's got a fork. That's not fair. That's not square. Now, wait a minute. I want to be impartial. You but... said this tape was for the bad guys. Now, wait a minute. You should, he's got a fork. Whoa! You say bad guys do things like that? Well, how you like them apples now? But Steve Strong is finding out what it is to deal with a rougher kid on the block. Now, wait a minute. This match is not over. Just because... Look! He, he's wielding it. He's ready. He's going after my butt. But I like Abdullah, too. I'm, I'm just going to sit here and shut up. Okay, referee is counting. The two men are outside the ring. The statement has gone insane. Abdullah himself hurting his, his own head, but he don't care. He's after finishing up Steve Strong and getting the title, but they have forgotten one important thing. The rules on the World Wrestling Council, the referee is counting. They better get back into the ring before the 20 count. Oh my goodness, what a matchup. Are you sure that's the rules, or is it like your Texas no, no, or your street time, fight? You're no, sure? No, I got You're this sure. one. Okay. I got this one right. I got it. I got it. I got You're it. One Don't worry about four. it. That's 250. Okay. Referee keeps on counting. There's the bell. Referee Isaac Rosario has. He can single. count to 20. He's not like El Vikingo if he only counts to two. Okay. This means that regardless of whatever happens from now on on this uh, match, uh, Steve Strong retains the title. Ooh, right on the rear end with a fork. Oh. 
My goodness. On the rear end, Rogers with a fork. Oh my God. Oh. Hey! To the referee. Well, that's what, that's what happens when you mess with the bad boys. When you mess with the bad boys, they sometimes make you feel so good. And Isaac Rosario just found out what it feels like to be hit by one of the bad boys. Okay, when some of you fancy those good pictures on some of the American wrestling magazines, and you're wondering who is that crazy nut that goes so close into taking his pictures, one of them is Eddie Grice. Look at him. He goes as close as you can call it, and he's been hurt many times. But that's the price you gotta pay if you wanna cover the action the way it is. And the end result of this confrontation between Strong and Abdullah, they both are disqualified, sell out crowd at the stadium, victory in San Juan, Puerto Rico. By disqualification, double DQ, Steve Strong retains the World Wrestling Council Universal Championship. But Abdullah the Butcher, I'm pretty sure, will do his best. And to I've get got, him back. I've got just one question. Where is Domingo Robles? Oh, stop it. Let's go into some more action. And speaking of bad, bad boys of wrestling, what about the hustler one? The Caribbean heavyweight champion, Rip Rogers, in this matchup against TNT. Uh, no DQ stipulation. Hey, look at him. He attacked me for no reason. I've done nothing to deserve this. Look, he's taking me. He's hitting me. He's messing my nice robe up. He's throwing me in the ring. He's beating me up. And the, the what are you doing now? What? What are you doing now? You're fighting back. It's no disqualification. Good move by TNT. Wow. Oh. oh. That's right. That's what Mr. TNT says. It's no disqualification. And check out the tan. You got check some kind of sense of humor, Mr. Rogers. Check out the tan. Okay. Check out the body. Listen to the people. 15,000. Look, at they're throwing stuff at the ring, they're throwing money at me because they're trying to give me money because that's what I am. I'm a hustler. Whoa. Okay, no disqualification. Hustler Rip Rogers defending the World Wrestling Council Caribbean Heavyweight Championship against ex-champion TNT, the Karate Ninja Expert. Let's talk a little bit about the career of this youngster recently became uh, second black belt uh, down in uh, Taekwondo. And not only that, but he was named 1989 World Wrestling Council Wrestler of the Year. Now, wait a minute, let's not talk about TNT. Let's talk about me. Let's talk about the co-host. Let's talk about the bad boys of professional wrestling. I'm the star of this tape. It's me, Hustler Rip Rogers, the call. And look at me get down. Look at me get dirty. Look at me get bad. And watch me hit him with this chair because I'm going to smash Ooh. his head off. You're bad. You're that's bad. Right. I'm bad. I'm bad. Oh, I love it. And that's the worst part of it. You love being bad. You have no remorse. And you talk about guys like Abdullah the Butcher and Steve Strong. Well, you might have that flamboyant look, but... I think you're as bad as they are, and wow. perhaps a little bit more sneaky. <laughs> I love you know a lot of the bad boys profess the wrestling. They're a little bit overweight. They're a little bit ugly. But look at me. I'm lean and mean, baby, and I'm good looking, and I drive every woman wild. And there's nothing these cra look at that dance, baby. I can do it on the floor. I can do it in the ring, and I can do it in the sand. Is it, is it true, Mr. Rogers, that in one of your houses in the states? You have four giant color TVs that play your matches on BCRs at the same time, so you could walk from one room to the other? That's it, Mr. Svinovich. That's why I'm one of the bad boys. Okay. I got it. All right, just checking. You hear a lot of uh, gossip sometimes from wrestlers talking about the uh, other friends, and I'm just checking on that. Okay, Rogers uh, showing off like uh, usually. And now see, now what kind of a behavior is this? What do you mean you, what have, kind of you have the man down, you go outside, you look for some object here, and you go back in the ring, taking advantage of the no disqualification rules. Oh, what kind of a oh, champion are you? I'm a smart champion. That's why I'm the Caribbean heavyweight champion. Oh, but it's legal when you do Boom. it. Look at that. Muhammad Ali. Boom. Sugar Ray Leonard. Okay. Look at that. Tommy Hurt. Boom. Okay. The hitman. Good look punches. at him go. Look at him go. That's right. I'll look give at you that. Credit. Look at that. And what's he doing? It's hitting me. I didn't do anything. Okay, Rogers. Boy, if, this, if there's one thing harder than seeing you in action, cheating in the ring is also seeing you cheating when you're doing the, the color on this tape. And the fans are watching it at home or whatever they are right now, and they are not blind. They see you're cheating. They see your style. 
Watch out, look at this move on the Karate Ninja yeah, Expert. look at the move. Excuse me for being smart. Oh, you, well, Excuse me for knowing move. what's going on. Good Excuse defensive move. Excuse me for being one step ahead of Mr. TNT. Excuse me for being the Caribbean heavyweight champion. Excuse me for being the number one sex symbol in all professional wrestling today. And excuse me for beating up the so-called local star, Mr. TNT. Okay, speaking about uh, beating up uh, your opponent, I don't think it's been a one-way uh, match here. I think it's been pretty, pretty even, pretty even. Well, Roger. how can you say that? I've completely dominated this match. And if you don't like it, put this video in reverse and play it over again, and you'll see the same result. Hustle Rip Rogers on top all the way, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, here we go again. To the ropes, TNT, and there is a good move by Rogers. Sneaking in on their martial arts with a dangerous sleeper hold. And to your kids at home and teenagers, never, never attempt to do any of these holds. They are deadly. No, all you kids at home, listen to the Hustler man. He'll tell you what to do. Practice the sleeper hold on your little fat cousin. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, now, wait a minute. I'm not going to allow you to say this. ENG Productions and Hugo Sabinovich, it is not allowed for Rogers to say this. He just has his dry sense of humor. Let's get back into the, to the matchup here. This is a very deadly match on the hold that has been applied by Rogers. This uh, hold right here, martial arts sleeper hold, One, if not stopped at the right time, could two, cost TNT... Severe. Three, right there. He he Fatal should be out. He should be out. He should be out. Now, that's why we got a stupid referee. Well, he was Porter. checking the pulse, and TNT reacted. His hand went up and stood up. That is a signal. Now, look what he did right there. He kicked me in the lower extremities, and it wasn't in my knee. Why did he do that? Uh, he, I guess he was just trying to protect his life. Everything goes. No DQ. Caribbean Heavyweight Championship on the line from Puerto Rico, TNT, from USA, Rip, Rip Rogers, the hustler one. And here we have a true confrontation of different styles in wrestling. TNT against the sneaky and vicious attack of the champion Rogers. Good move by TNT. Whoa, all over. Rip Rogers, here we go. He drops the knee. And it, I think it's going to be all over for the champion. There goes the count. No, you got to be smart. Ooh, you see, I knew all the time where the rope was. That's why I'm the Caribbean heavyweight champion. Right now, you may think I'm, I'm losing. No, what I'm doing, I'm waiting for the right moment. I'm luring the TNT into a false sense of security. I think you're waiting too long, my man. He's cleaning the ring with you. Ah, what did I tell you? Okay, I was wrong. Then again, you are the champion, and you you are indeed a great superstar. But let's not, not let's not take anything away from TNT. He's also a great wrestler. And now watch, I'm oh. gonna set him up for my ripperplex. There he goes, TNT. Ooh. One more leg up, and he's set. Okay. Now watch me. Watch as I apply this. Just watch. The fans are in fear as we're gonna see the famous ripperplex. It's gonna be all over for the challenger. Oh, look out! A block by TNT. Having some problems, uh, Rogers? Well, the big chicken, he's holding on to the rope. What but do you I'll stop. him to do? He has to hold on. He knows if you connect that, it's all over. What a headbutt. Wow, look at that. Move by TNT. And Rogers off the ropes. What a move by TNT. Must have been a frustrating moment in your career to have a man block your favorite uh, finishing move. No comments there, huh? Some silence on the part of the champion. He's got me. I didn't know that. I was out right this moment. I didn't. Wait a minute. No, I mean, I, I you know. You were I mean. out. You said it. You were no. out. Yes, you were. What a oh. kick. What a kick. The dynamite kick by TNT. And he singles for that deadly TNT Cobra sleeper. There we have it. No escape from that deadly Cobra. We're going to have a new Caribbean no, champion. No, wait a Look, we can't. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Abuda Din, your favorite friend, your well, you pal. You know why he came in, don't you? 
Well, just to help because, you, no, help you save yourself TNT, and not lose faith. You were gonna lose the belt. TNT called his mother a dirty name. That's why oh, he came come in. Come on, stop it. Yeah, look at the bad boys beat up TNT. Okay, look he at did that. beat up on TNT. Embedded comes into the rescue. Uh, he has been disqualified. TNT wins the match by disqualification, and Rogers retains the title. Back into more action in just a few seconds. The great war. What, what, what is this here? <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. I just talked to a representative of Mr. Oh, no. ENG Company, and we've got the return match. It's revenge time for Domingo Robles, and he's going to teach this young upstart, this green rookie, this jabroni, jumping Joe Savoli. He's going to teach him a lesson once and for all. How can you get away with doing this? I was not. This is not on my schedule in my format of this match. I have the. I have here the great war. But I'm the co-host. I've got friends where you need friends. And there it is. That, that, oh, I love it. That's why he's a bad boy. I, that's, that's why he's a legend. That's why I want to be the bad boy. I don't think we should have this match in this tape. But what do you mean? He's a legend. He's Domingo Robles. He's from Fajardo. He's the honorary mayor of Fajardo. He's one of the bad boys. He's patented his chop. He's patented his famous eye gouge. I gout. think he's paying right you off. That's the way I see it. I'm waiting for the famous Domingo Robles pulling of the false teeth out and fighting the guy. That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> Boy, Mr. Rogers, what a sense of humor. Okay, what a kick by jumping Joseph Baldi. Even though uh, he shows a lot of inexperience, but he's got a lot of guts, this uh, Sabaldi. And he's facing uh, a veteran in uh, professional wrestling in Domingo Robles. And what is happening here? We have some coaching going on on the side. Well, it's obvious that Savoldi needs some coaching. Well, he's because a young You can young tell wrestler. he's green. He's inexperienced. He doesn't know what's going well, on. Well, everybody deserves a, an opportunity to learn and to, to start somewhere. I know, but when you're getting in somebody, look at that slam. Look at the strength. Look at the power. Look at the agility. Look at the wrestling knowledge of my buddy, Domingo Robles. Okay, against the ropes, here it comes. Backdrop by Sabaldi. The world's lowest backdrop. See, he's green. He's inexperienced. He didn't get the proper push. Good drop kicks on Sabaldi. No, average drop kicks. Uh, Very average. I thought they were pretty good. Okay, against the ropes, uh, turnbuckle. Robles. Adjusting his tights. This match is a classic. It's got Domingo Robles. Nothing else needs to be said. Okay, there is uh, Sabaldi putting some pressure in the inner part of the leg of Robles, punishing the leg. Domingo Robles back on the mat, holding on, but Sabaldi is able to pull him away from the ropes and punishes more on the leg of Robles. And that has taken the aggressiveness out of Domingo Robles. No way, you might think that. Savoldi's thinking, oh, now he's going to be Mr. Th what kind of hold is that? He don't know if it's a spinning toe hold. Savoldi's so green. He's such a rookie. He's trying to apply a figure four. He's trying to apply a spinning toe hold. He doesn't know he's fundamental. He's trying he doesn't know he's basic. He's green. He's, he's trying raw. to hook some kind he's of a, a rookie. some kind of a, an inverted scorpion, but uh, was not effective. As Robles is a very awkward wrestler and was not uh, being a target there for. Uh, Sabaldi. Oh, look at the all-American boy now. Pulls him by the foot off the ropes and then says, oh, I didn't mean to do it. Now There's I need more coaching, coaching here. <laughs> okay, Robles taking full advantage of uh, that mistake on Sabaldi. There's and he went right, he right. went, oh, there's the teeth. That's right. There's the teeth. I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. My life's complete now. I've seen the teeth. I've seen the teeth of Domingo Robles the honor, honorary mayor of Fajardo, and there it goes again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. The teeth went out of his mouth. This is unbelievable. I've never seen this before. This Robles is something else. Oh, a right-headed headlock, a classic. My goodness. I have never seen a wrestler take its false teeth out of use it against his opponent. I saw it twice in this match. 
dealing with the I don't want to see after this. I don't want to see any more about Robles. I think it, this is disgusting, really. Oh, there's there's my famous two finger eye gap. Oh. It's almost as famous as a five finger groin grab. But look at Domingo Robles now. He's in complete control. Boom! A chop to the throat, and Savoli looks like the green. Okay, horn. let me let me hear it. How much is he paying you? Okay, I want to know the scoop on this. He's, you got to be on his payroll. Look at this move. High maneuver by Saboli. Inverted suplex. He's got him. Three seconds. But who was the first one up? Who was the first one up? Tell me that. The winner, Domingo Robles. This is embarrassing. Let's, let's get away from this match. Let's go into another match. Okay, fans, we're back here with the man of the Ripple Plex, and he has taken over Caribbean Championship Wrestling. Looks like a pirate ship here. And what is this here? Well, it just happens to be my partner, Buddha Dean, won half the World Tag Team Champions. You got a nice green cone there. Well, it's because it's the Republican Demo Party wanting my buddy, Abuda Dean, to run for mayor of Puerto Rico. You guys are crazy. You're talking about crazy, crazy things. What about the main event coming up? We're talking about some vicious fighting in what is called the Great War in Puerto Rico. Rip That's Rock. right, in the Great War of Puerto Rico. Everybody knows it's at the Cafe Del Mar. And who's going to eat? Wait, wait, wait a minute. What, what do you mean, Cafe Del Mar? Well, this is the Great War at the stadium. We're talking about Maya West at the Sports Palace. Oh, I thought it was the, I thought it was the war with the, with the Puerto Ricans where who's going to get the rice and who's Who's going to get the beans and rice, beans, you know, the mixture, right? No, I'm not sure. This, this is not that war. This oh. is the main event. This includes uh, the Justice Army, represented by Carlos Colon and his top uh, uh, friends against Chicky Star, his army. And it's a special two rings with a special cage. Nowhere to escape. It's got a roof on it. The only way to win is you got to handcuff the five men. And after you do that, then the referee gives you the key. If any of your friends has been uh, handcuffed, you get him free. And then you got five minutes to beat him up. You mean I get to see that today on this video? That's right. I can't wait. Bring it on now. Let's go. Hey, my Sultan of the Oeste, Palacio of Deportes de Mayagüez. Esta es la revancha. Okay, wrestling fans, here comes the bad, bad boys of wrestling. And we're talking about some mean wrestlers here, including Hercules Ayala, Abdullah the Butcher. We got Chicky Star. We got the Iron Sheik. And you've got Grizzly Boo. The Mountain Man. Okay, here we go. Special cage built up for this. Two rings. Once they're in, the door gets locked. Nobody could come out. There's a roof on the cage. The only way to win is to handcuff the other five opponents. And look who's, look who's locking the cage door. Who is that? That's Mr. Victor Quinones. Oh, it's Victor Quinones, the guy who needed the haircut. The guy who runs around at Danny's, who hangs out at Elizabeth's. Isn't that him? Well, I, I, I don't know about that, Mr. Mr. Rogers. Okay, there is the lock. And like we said, the rules, you have to handcuff your opponents on some chains that are on the walls of this cage. Once you uh, handcuff your five opponents, then you are declared the winner, and the referee will give you some keys to open up the handcuffs of the man on your team that were handcuffed, and then you have five minutes to beat up the opponents that are handcuffed. And on one side, it's Chicky Star and Invader going at it. There's nowhere to escape, though, Rogers. Well, fun for my friend Chicky. You got all these rule breakers like Carlitos Colon, Bruiser Brody, TNT, the Invader. They're a bunch of rule breakers, and you got them trying to beat up my friends, my allies, my compadres, like Grizzly Boone, like Hercules Ayala, like Chicky Star, like Abdul the Butcher, and like the Iron Sheik. And I think it's an unfair advantage because you've got all these crazy carabiners cheering for Carlitos Colon and company. Okay, we have a matchup in the corner by Colon and Abdullah. And there is an Iron Sheik trying to help Chicky Star. TNT going out in the corner with Chicky Star. And there is uh, the vigilante Dutch Mantel. And look at the stupid, ugly hair on his back. He needs to shave the hair on his back. He looks like he's Puerto Rican. Look at the ring, the special war cage. And TNT connecting some tremendous karate chops on Chikia Star. Blood gushing out on the head of Chikia Star. 
This is the way it looks from our top camera in a corner. Brody doing some damage on the big man. No, wait a minute. Grizzly That's the way I see it. I see it. Grizzly Boone doing some, doing some damage on Bruiser Brody. Report the facts as they really happen. And okay. look at Chicky Star beating up TNT. TNT. I love it. TNT is beating up on Chicky Star. That's the way I see it. Hercules getting hit on the corner. And there's different battles going on at the same time. Remember, you see those chains hanging on the side of the walls. They have a handcuff, and that's where you got to put one of the arms of your opponent. And the winners are the team that handcuffed their five opponents. But what if the bad boys would happen to lose? What would happen if they would lose? That you mean, are you trying to tell they me? They get beat up. That's right. You mean you've got five minutes, 300 seconds to pummel, to bruise, to kick, to bite, to gouge That's the losing right. team. They can do anything they want to. Anything goes and no one is allowed to interfere till the referee says the five minutes are up. And that is a stipulator in the contract when they were contracted for this great war. And there is uh, the vigilante Dutch Mantel all over the big mountain man. Grizzly Boo, TNT is in a battle with Abdullah the Butcher. They better in the corner with Chiki Star. The Iron Sheik is in a battle with Bruiser Brody. Hercules Ayala in trouble with Carlos Colon. This is the Great War, as it only happens in Caribbean wrestling, the hottest action. Sanchez by the World Wrestling Council. There's a figure four leg lock on Ayala. It's a figure four on Ayala, but what's got into Carlitos Colon? Why is he trying to make him submit? Because it has nothing to do with trying to put somebody's hand in a handcuff. See, you gotta be smart. You, you gotta to know what the rules you are. You have to destroy your opponent in order for him to be weak enough so you could put him on, the, on that chain with the handcuffs. Yeah, but you gotta be smart. When you see Hercules Ayala, he's gonna take Cologne and put his wrist up in that handcuff. He's not gonna worry about a figure four leg lock. When you see somebody like Grizzly Boone, he's going to beat his man into submission. He's going to put his hand in the handcuff. He's not going to waste his time like Dutch Mantel's doing. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't. Okay, wait, no, a minute. No, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. He's no get away from start. that. Well, wait oh, a minute. Wait a minute. Ayala. Hercules Ayala. He has been handcuffed. Here are the sports fellas in my OS. Two hours and a half away from San Juan City, the capital of Puerto Rico, my OS, where this matchup is taking place. The big confrontation between the Justice Army of Carlos Colon against the Chiqui Stars Sports Club or his army and Ayala has been handcuffed. Big Hercules is out of it. And now look at the way he better smack it on Hercules. He can't do nothing to protect himself. Oh, Mr. Cheap Shot Invader. It would be a look at him. He's saying, get up. He knows he can't get up. He's handcuffed by us with a steel chain and handcuffs. Look at the cheap shot artist. It would take somebody low down like the invader to beat up on somebody that's helpless, that's somebody not, that's incapacitated. Let's not forget Rip Rogers. This is the great war. This is not a regular match. Here you're fighting just to survive inside the cage. There is no rules with exception of handcuffing your opponents. Everything goes, low blows, low kicks biting, uh, brass knuckles, whatever you might be able to bring inside. Everything is legal, as this is a different world for the men involved. Yeah, but still, it's a low blow. It's not fair. You wouldn't see me pulling something like that. I'm I would wrestle sure. fair. I would wrestle I square. So sure. I would wrestle clean, because I always abide by the rules. Now look, the so-called Justice Army. Okay, wait a minute. We saw one corner that had chic. He almost has TNT. And the handcuffs. Wait a minute. He's got him. The Iron Sheik got TNT. He has fallen prisoner now. And now it's even. We got one uh, from the Justice Army and one from Chicky's Army. And now there are four men in each team. Well, I would say it's quite an accomplishment by the Iron Sheik because they were outnumbered five, five to four. But still he put TNT. Oh, wait a minute. Now we see Grizzly Boone. Now, wait a minute. That's cheating it because they've got one more man. One more man the, the Grizz, Justice Army has. Grizzly Boone now on handcuffs. He was double team in the corner. And now Chicky starts trying to help him, but it's too late. He's been handcuffed. So now the uh, Chicky Sports Club's army is a disadvantage. Two of his uh, powerful men, the mountain man Grizzly Boone and Hercules. 
are handcuffed. So we are looking at some disadvantage now. Let's see what happens here. The invader, he's got Chicky outside the ropes. This is the action of the great war, Abdullah the Butcher, trying to handcuff Carlos Colon. He's getting close to doing so in the corner. Meanwhile, the uh -huh. invader. Just what I kick. thought. Somebody low down like the invader. He's either got to kick somebody in the lower extremities or he's got to beat up on somebody who's helpless in a hand. That's about his speed. Okay, That's no, why I don't minute. like him. Wait a minute. The invader's got the chicken star in the corner. The handcuffs are almost put in his wrist. It's getting close. He's got him. He's got him. Chicky Star is in trouble now. Three of the sports clubs. Uh, man, are I look at look at the cheap shot. Look at him. Look at the bully on the block. Whoa. The invaders tough when Chicky's handcuffed. But what would happen? What would happen if it was if the tables were reversed? Yeah, Mr. Tough Guy. Okay, now Mr. We're looking tough at Guy. Just Abdullah the Butcher and Adam Sheik. That are still fighting for the win on the sports club. Let's see what happens here. Carlos Colon trying to handcuff Abdullah the Butcher. Meanwhile, the invader going out on Chiquia Star, who is a bloody mess. Don't rub okay, it in. Okay, wait a minute, one second. What's happening in this corner with Abdullah and Carlos Colon? Carlos Colon struggling to put those handcuffs on those big wrists of the wild man from Sudan. It's just too bad Domingo Robles is not in there to help oh, him. Stop it with Domingo Robles. I'm fed up with you and Robles. I'm sick of Robles. I don't want to hear of Robles again. Okay, here we go. Abdullah the Butcher in a struggle with Carlos Colon in the corner. Things are not looking too great for the Army. Chiqui Star in bad shape. Here comes the Invader. Headbutt by Colon. The Invader goes to the other side of the ring. Let's see what happens here. Colon. In a corner with Abdullah the Butcher. And Brody has fallen victim of the handcuff. Wait a minute, things are looking more even now as Brody has fallen victim of the handcuffs. Let's see what develops in this great war. Carlos Colon being attacked now by Abdullah the Butcher, the Iron Sheik. Casting Bader. And I hear and, and listen to the people. They're screaming, they're cheering, they're going, Sheik, beat up the invader. Go hide and Sheik. Handcuff, handcuffing, because all the people in Maya way, they're cheering for Abdullah. They're cheering for the Iron Sheik. The fans the know better. The TV audience knows better. They could hear for themselves. Okay, the invader being double teamed. Here by the Sheik and Abdullah. Here comes Carlos Colon. Headbutt of both Abdullah and the Sheik. Now it's a four way inside the Great War. Only four men are losing the ring. And we said the only way to finish this confrontation is by handcuffing all the five opponents. Now there's a battle between the Sheik and the Invader. And this is going to go down the wire. Look out with the Sheik. The ex amateur wrestler doing some good moves on the Invader. Okay, here we go. He has the handcuffs on the invader. Yes, he's got him. I think he does. Rogers, I think the Iron Sheik has handcuffed. Yes. Invader. Now we'll see and, the bad boys in that. Abdullah the Butcher. Abdullah the Butcher has been handcuffed. So now it's one on one. The destiny, the victory depends on who can handcuff. The other between Cologne and the Iron Sheik. I'm putting my He's money on it. He's got a object on his hand. Well, so what? You said there's no rules, no I'm disqualification. It. Anything Excuse goes. Excuse me, Mr. Rogers. Wow! Oh, and look at that punch to the head by the Sheik. The Iron Sheik punishing on Cologne. And now the fans are going crazy here. They're yelling, go, Sheik, go. I can hear him. I'm not stupid. They're rooting for... The Justice Army. They're rooting for Domingo Robles. Robles again. The fans have erupted here as they could feel that the victory could come at any second and it could go either way. What a match.
This is the Great War, where the tough men come to compete and prove why they are in this strong and dangerous profession. That's right, the bad boys of professional wrestling. And we're talking about bad boys. We're talking about the Iron Sheik, Chicky Star, Abdul the Butcher, Hercules Ayala. Men, real men, not skinny wimps like Dutch okay, Mantel. Now, now, wait a minute. Look at what is happening here. We There's mean. a free chain with a handcuff on the other side. But but the Sheik went where, where Chicky Star was, and he handcuffed him right where Chicky Star is. There so? must be a purpose here. Look out. The Iron Sheik has a foreign object all over the head of Cologne, blood gushing out. Okay, we have the winners. Carlos Cologne has been handcuffed. The winners of the Great War. The Chickies Army, the sports club. And now the referee has given the Iron Sheik the keys so he could liberate or set free his friends, his partners of the army. And once that is accomplished, they will have five minutes to beat up none other than the Justice Army. The fans are sad, but I see Rogers is having a great time right here. Hey, this is great. I can just see, I love it when the Iron Sheik beats up Carlos Colon. I think it's true justice when Abdul the Butcher beats up the so-called Justice Army. It's only fair that Chicky Star gets five minutes with Dutch Mantel. It's a privilege and a pleasure to see Grizzly Boone beat up the so-called good guys. It's my pleasure, it's my privilege to be co-host on this video and watch Hercules Ayala, the, one of the strongest men in wrestling, one of the real bad boys in professional wrestling. It's a pleasure to sit here and watch him beat up the invader. Okay, Abdullah the Butcher, he wants to be set free. He wants to join the big party here. Oh, look at that, with a belt now. Whoa. Oh, so what? You're the man that said there are no rules. You're the co-host that right. said anything goes. You're the Mr. TV announcer that said anything goes when the whistle blows. Okay. You're the man that told me the rules on this ENG promotion of the of the bad boy videos that no matter what, you can do anything oh, you want to. Look at Adam Sheik. He's digging that the belt buckle on the forehead of Carlos Colon. What's well, going to improve his looks, just like Grizzly Boone's improving the looks of TNT. Okay, hey, look at Hercules Ayala. He's, been He's trying to break the ribs of TNT, and that's what I call justice. And the fans are sad at the Sports Palace. The favorites to win this great war have fallen victims oh. of the Iron Sheik of oh. the Butcher, Hercules Ayala. Oh. Why don't you cry and you're spilled? Look at the invader. He don't look so tough now, does he? A while ago, he was picking on Chicky Star, and now Chicky's getting some revenge because the invader doesn't look so tough now, does he? He's pretty tough when he could pick on somebody tied up against the cage with a handcuff, but now that it's, the tables have been reversed, now that it's his turn. Oh, look out. Here comes Abdullah to the other side of the ring. This could spell trouble for the guys handcuffed on the other side. As Abdullah is getting closer to the other side, Brody, Brody is keeping some of the rivals away with his big kicks. But uh, on the corner, something strange is going on. Chiki Star and the Iron Sheik have let the uh, Cologne free before the five minutes. And this could be something. I think coming out of the crowd, it's Domingo Robles. Now, wait a minute. Please get Domingo Robles out. We have noticed that the Iron Sheik, it's all over Carlos Colon. They were not supposed to let them free before the five minutes. Well, the but Sheik's not an expert timekeeper. He doesn't have a watch on him. How's he supposed to know? Besides, he wants, he wants to cripple. He wants to put the camel okay. clutch on Carlitos Colon. That's, that's why. that's the reason. You okay. See, you think the Sheik's dumb. All right. You think he's stupid, but he's a genius. Okay, the Iron Sheik's got the camel clutch on Carlos Colon. Look at the pressure on it. Meanwhile, more punishment by Chicky Star on TNT Abdullah, it's all over. The Invader won. And that deadly camel clutch, the famous submission hall of the Iron Sheik.
Oliver Carlos Colon, no submission could be accomplished here, and there's no referee here to signal. And the Iron Sheik definitely causing some punishment on the lower back of Cologne with that camel clutch and plus the kicks of Chiki Star. Disaster for the Justice Army. They have been beat up badly by the bad, bad guys of professional wrestling, Abdullah the Butcher. <laughs> Did you see that head almost went through the, the, the openings of that cage? Yeah, it would improve the looks of the Dutch Mantel, the so-called vigilante. Okay, Abdullah the Butcher Who cares? punishing on the Invader One, Chiki Star, giving some more shots on Carlos Colon. More punishment, more blood on the forehead of Carlos. <laughs> and on the corner. Oh, I love this. There's I enjoy this. Look at Carlitos Cologne. Look at the ledge. Look at the Iron Sheiks. He's given up 43 times. I've heard him 43 times say, I give up. Okay. I they, give up. We see the Iranian flag being brought into the ring by Chiki Star. Look out. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> Oh, Iran number one, the Sheik number one. That's what's going on. How could you do that, Rogers? Very how, easily. How could Iran you, number how could one, you, how the could Sheik number one. Wow, and look at that right there. Using that uh, metal flagpole, using it to his advantage, Sheikhi Star, completing the damage on the Justice Army. The winners of this great war. And look at Ayala, he's got the turnbuckle off. You talking about destruction. There's Carlos, that pull up his throat. My goodness. You talking about getting beat up, embarrassed and destroyed at the same time, while dozens of fans are sad watching and there's nothing you can do about it. But witness, I would say it was a bad day for the Justice Army. You are Excedrin right, sir. headache number one. Sort of like going 0 for 4. Missing all your free throws. Having five passes intercepted. Getting knocked out in the first 30 seconds of a fight. But today, in the bad boys tape, you finally get to see who's really bad. Hercules Ayala, Chicky Star, the Iron Sheik. Grizzly Boo and Abdul the Butcher, the bad boys of wrestling, the baddest of the bad, and look at Carlitos Cologne. And he look keeps at it, Dutch Mantel. He keeps it coming. He keeps it coming. The Iron Sheik not letting go. The five minutes have passed already, and they keep on with the beating here. The fans are getting more and more worried as the five minutes have passed already. Reference coming in. Some other wrestlers, I think, making their way into the ring. Is it Domingo Robles? Stop it with Domingo Robles. I'm going to go and investigate on this situation, Rogers, and perhaps we're going to find out if he got paid off by this. Okay, the invader reacted, but a little bit too late. As the damage has been done, Carlos laying down, found a mat, a bloody mess, and more embarrassing, the fact that the Justice Army was defeated by Chicky's Army. Your winners are the bad, bad boys of wrestling. Chiki Star, Hercules Ayala, the Iron Sheik, Abdul the Butcher, and the big mountain man, Grizzly Boone. And there are your results inside the cage. Carlos laying down a lot of blood. And I think he's completely out. And, Senseless. And what a way to end this tape. This promotion of ENG Productions. What a way to show the fans who the true bad boys of professional wrestling really are. What a way to close. What a way to end it. Glory, glory personified. But the big question in everyone's mind, the question that Hugo Savinovich has, the question that I have, the question that ENG Promotion wants to know, the big question is, in Bad Boys 2, where will, when will the emergence of Dominguez Robles finally take place? Okay, I think we heard enough of you, Mr. Rogers. Okay, the final result of this great war is the sports club obtaining a big victory over the Justice Army and Carlos not moving an inch from the ring. And there's concern in the looks of all his 
friends here and fans have gathered around this special cage as not only that camel clutch was applied to him, but also he was hit severely by that flagpole and powerful kicks by the Sheik, by Chiki Star, and then that flagpole against his throat area and some other punishment. Fans, this has been the Great War. The bad, bad, bad guys of professional wrestling. Well, it's a madhouse, and we announced that, oh, it's great wrestling here, but what a treat here, seeing the bad boys. Uh, oh, my goodness, ENG Productions. I don't think I want to be invited back. Two crazy people. We saw him in action. He's got the ripper plex. And let me tell you something. TNT gave you a tremendous beating here. What do you mean, TNT? Get, get out of here. What do you mean you give me tremendous you beating? You off this here. You can, I'm supposed to be the host here. Well, wait a minute. You want me to ripper plex you uh, right now? Uh, huh? That's what I thought. Because when you got 29 inches somewhere on your body, and all the women in the world are going completely crazy, and all the guys know that you can do it and back it up. And when everybody knows you're the king of the bad boys, of the world of professional wrestling. The only thing that I can say is wait until the Bad Boys Take Two comes out because I get a very big surprise. And I know the ENG Productions, baby, is going to top it next time. Whoa.